and welcome back to the channel of nonsense. Today I want to talk about the topic of quirkiness because I think quirkiness will get you far in life. Look at the music industry of quirky hairstyles, vocal styles and, uh, and Harry styles. But anyway, everyone has a quirk. Look, there's Rachel Hogg. She has an extra A in her name. That's quite quirky. But in the car world, quirkiness is usually kind of frowned upon. Which makes you wonder what the hell Volkswagen was smoking when it signed off the T-Roc Cabriolet. It's a Cabriolet SUV. I don't really understand. Anyway, I'm going to take you for a full walk around, do a review, take it for a drive and chat to Rachel about it because she's been looking after it for a month or two to find out if quirkiness is bad or if it's actually quite a decent car but motoring journalists are all a bunch of idiots and they just think it's soft and blamongy. Sometimes that can be a good thing. Just look at me. Anyway, let's get cracking. then a car that Volkswagen says mixes the rugged appeal of an SUV with the feel-good factor of a wind in the hair soft top. Not that I know about that, I'm as bald as the moon. But anyway, 28% of T-Roc sold in Germany are Cabriolets. And we know that Germans are fashionable people, so there must be some kind of rationable, fashionable appeal here. Uh, it's worth bearing in mind that this T-Roc Cabriolet is a bit different to the regular T-Roc. For a start, it's made in Germany, not Portugal and China, like the hardtop. And it's a bit longer. And it's got a longer wheelbase than the regular T-Roc. Uh, 34 millimeters longer, if you care about that stuff, to give it a bit more rear seat space. And it's, um, yeah, it weighs one and a half tons, which is 200 kilos more than a regular T-Roc. Volkswagen says it is aimed at younger buyers who are more likely to buy into that convertible SUV lifestyle. But this is a 42,000 pound car. I can't remember what it starts at, but this one's got about three or four grand's worth of options on it. This is the range topping 1.5 litre petrol, which has got 150 horsepower. There's my shadow. Enjoy that shadow fetishist. Hello. It's front wheel drive. It'll do 0 to 62 in about 9.6 seconds. So it's not especially fast but it is very yellow, which is just fantastic. The options on this one include 1,100 quid of adaptive dampers, 620 pounds of the black pack, which makes some bits black, like the mirrors, the center console, and um, the wheels are a different design. 2,200 pound of Vienna leather interior, which gets you some slightly fancier seats with R-line badging, excuse my bag, sorry, all of my bags and my coats. And it's got 445 pounds of Beats audio, which we'll get onto, and 410 pounds of keyless ignition, which feels like a bit of a rip off in a car that already costs a lot of money. Anyway, let's have a look at the back. Legal Aid among you might have spotted it's a bit less practical than your regular Commonal Garden T-Roc because it's only got front doors and the boot is also quite a bit smaller. It's only 284 litres. Oh, I've got a T-Fowl active fryer in there. Anyway, um, yeah, there's the boot. I'll cut a shot without the T-Fowl active fry in there. But basically, it's quite a big space, but um, it's not very tall. It's quite deep, I should say. Um, but, you know, it doesn't change whether you put the roof up or down. So it's not the worst Cabriolet boot I've ever seen, but it's not massive. You can flip the rear seats down using this little toggle here and you can get like not skis because they wouldn't fit but you can climb through into the car there right let's jump in the back seats and see if it's actually practical even though it's only a four-seater all right Volkswagen claims this has got four full-size seats so let's test that out obviously you have to flip the driver's seat forward and then it manually slides forward on its runners and now there's this awkward bit in the middle where you're standing up in an open top car and I feel a bit like the Pope or Adolf Hitler um, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit tight. That is in my driving position and it is touching my knees. But actually, I've got a little armrest down here and it's wide enough for two people. I can see why they took the middle seat out because three people would have struggled. Excuse the bottle of uh, whiskey. That's nothing to do with me. It's just Rachel Hogg has a bit of a problem, but we won't talk about that. But yeah, it's all right for occasional use back here. You'll get a child seat back here just about and kids will be fine for longer trips. I would have thought you've got two USB-Cs down here. 
And it's all right. It's, I mean, I've been in the back of tighter convertibles that are bigger. The interior of the T-Rock Cabriolet is pretty much the same as the hardtop one. So you get a sportyish flat bottom steering wheel. You get a digital dashboard and you get an infotainment system. It's kind of a mix of old and new Volkswagen stuff. So it's got wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but it's got the old school aircon buttons, which is fantastic and a win in my book. Uh, DSG gear knob, there's two USB-Cs down there and that is the control to put the roof up and down and it's got an electronic handbrake. Now, like the regular T-Rock, the plastics across here are a bit hard and cheap feeling, which is a bit of a bummer now that this costs 42,000 pounds. That's 42, sorry, I couldn't really get my words out. So yeah, there are bits of it that are nice, most of it to be fair, but some of it lets the side down a little bit. Anyway, and also don't forget these seats are 2,200 pound extra which is a bit of a rip-off. Anyway, that's enough of me waffling about the interior. Let's go for a drive and see if it's fun and what kind of fun it is, if it is fun. Right, I'm gonna go for a drive in the T-Rock Cabriolet with my friend and colleague, Rachel Hogg, who actually looks after this car and has been running it for the past month or so. So anyway, you start it with foot on the brake, press that button, and it's GSG, GSG, so <laughs> just put it into drive. Are you okay, huh? And, and you go, but, this is a convertible, and I think the rule of convertibles is, if it's not raining, the roof goes down, even in a bright yellow SUV convertible. I don't feel conspicuous, do you? I mean, this is the moment that my other half refers to it as becoming the skip. <laughs> I think that's a little bit harsh, but I anyway. Know. Let's go for a drive, and obviously, this is a kind of small SUV that people are gonna drive around town, as well as doing long distances in, so, um, I mean, it's handling this car park with a plum. <laughs> Try not to kill the old lady of a waitress bag. So I've got the car in normal mode, and this does have the 1100 quid adaptive dampers, um, which you can obviously switch between sport, comfort, etc., etc., to smooth it out. It's on 19 inch wheels because it's an R line, and the R line version gets slightly shorter, stiffer springs as opposed to the other one. What's it called? The T Rock Cabriolet Style. I think. This will also be a good test of how windy it is as well, because you won't be able to hear me if it gets really windy. Right, I'm driving around town, it's just easy to drive, it's got nice light steering, it goes where you want it, and over kind of small bumps, I'm not getting jolted about, so it's not, it's not ridiculously firm, here's a big one, that's fine. Now, if I was being a wanky motoring journalist, I would look in the rearview mirror and see that the back of the car is wobbling about a slightly different rate to the front, but I don't think anyone really cares about that. I'm in a big yellow blancmange. I don't want it to be ultra sporty, apart from the gearbox when I pull away at that roundabout. Um, so yeah, it is easy going and easy to live with, I can tell you that. And there's a normal T-Rock in front of us. And there's a Daihatsu going up my inside like a bastard. Um, interesting fact, normal T-Rock made in Portugal, Cabriolet, Made in Deutschland, so yeah. This is made at the factory where all convertible Volkswagens for all eternity have been made. Not that that should bother you. Anyway, let's do some twisty country roads and we'll find out if it's sporty at all. I don't think it's gonna be. Right, we're doing dual carriageway speeds now. And I have to say, with the roof off, it's quite quiet in here. It's not really blustery. You can pay £340 for an optional wind deflector, which covers the back seat. Uh, that's in the boot because we haven't worked out how to fit it. <laughs> but even without it, this is fine. It's civilised. It's not one of those convertibles where you dream of doing a long drive to the south of France, where actually you have tinnitus by the time you're halfway there. So I'm quite impressed. Now, visibility with the roof down is fine. Big mirrors are easy to see out of. When you put the roof up, uh, the rear window is a little bit small, so it's a little bit hard to see out of back there. But so far, I mean, this is, it rides really well. It's not particularly sporty handling, but we'll get some twisty roads in a bit. This is perfectly fine. Like, if you were the kind of journalist that just judges something before you've really driven it, you'd probably say it's a bit of a blamange, but it's a cruiser. It's a top-down feel-good thing, and I quite like it for that. I should point out this 1.5 litre engine has got cylinder deactivation and it will cruise and kind of cut the power when you are off the gas. So what, have you been getting 40 something yeah. MPG? Yeah. Which isn't bad considering it weighs a fair bit and it's a petrol engine. Anyway, 
let's get some twisty roads and then we'll ask Rachel what's annoyed her about it in her time with it. Anyway, I'm in sport mode now. It's brisk, this 150 horsepower engine, rather than fast. 0 to 60 is like 9.6 seconds. But off the line, it's quite punchy. It only really peters out when you get to 50 miles an hour. It sounds like a four-cylinder engine. It's now special, but it's perfectly good. You can also get this with a three-cylinder, one-liter engine. But in a car like this, that's going to feel pretty sluggish. So I would go for this. And this is the most popular engine in this car, according to Volkswagen UK. So yeah, on a twisty road is a little bit, a little bit jiggly. I'm in sport mode, admittedly. More interesting than me prattling on about how this drives is Rachel Hogg. <laughs> that was one of your nicer segues. I know. I, thought I was, was going to say good. I just sat here, just seeing my hair, like doing various like states oh, of like it's dancing. <laughs> oh, what a problem to have! I know you don't have this issue. <laughs> <laughs> I make up for it elsewhere. But um, <laughs> gross. <laughs> what I would say is, yeah. This is a car that I think you have to approach like with the right state of mind. 100%. Like, like you're not, you look at it, you're not going to expect it to go around the corners like a Formula One car. No. Unless you're on drugs, like most motoring journalists seem to be. Um, <laughs> but yeah, what don't you like about it? Because you've had this, what, two months now? And you've done a thousand miles pretty much. I love, it. I love that the time is just like increasing. I've had it a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks. Yeah, a couple of Sorry. weeks. Sorry. Close enough. By the time I get around to editing this, it'll be two Yeah, years. that's a good yeah. point. Um, genuinely so far the well the biggest thing that has annoyed me about it is that my other half refers to it as the skip um which i think is highly unfair i think it's a beautiful thing um especially in the turmeric yellow which i just i mean it's a cool color it's a cool color it's the kind of color that you normally only see in like the brochure photos yes. that no one actually buys no so Although, hopefully if you do buy one buy it in this color having said that we actually um we were up in yorkshire um a few weeks ago and saw one in oh the really did you do they a wave were, or were you not in this no they were parked up uh, um, so it was before i had it so um yes we were wondering if it was the press car but no i got this just with delivery miles on it so yes um but genuinely so far it makes me smile all my friends that have come out for a drive with me have absolutely loved it it just it's just great like it's fun nothing else exists like it i know they used to sell the evoke converts which i really but, liked yeah. again yeah that i was wanted like... to hate it and then i drove it and i was like no i get it this <laughs> they're just feel good cars yeah. and i think you know this is a cliche that i break out all the time in normal real world driving yeah. you're doing this i'm in a 40 limit in the yeah. countryside just cruising along and it's better because i can put my hand up yeah. and wave to Vauxhall Zafira drivers <laughs> who are now going to crash because they're very confused <laughs> Vauxhall Zafira drive Zafira Zafira drivers are always confused yes why did you buy a Zafira yeah oh no it's on fire but that's the thing like it just for me i just adore convertibles i know yeah. that's not remotely kind of subjective or no, anything i'm with you though i'm with you it's like you know when people prattle on about i want a porsche cayman rather than a boxster mm. because the cayman's got a slightly stiffer chassis it's like you cannot feel that on the road yeah. um the advantages of being able to get sunburnt bald head far outweigh sticking a hard top roof on it and I guess it's just weird that it's an suv that's convertible but yeah. you can take your friends along and like yeah. you have done you can kind of show more people this kind of roof down life yeah. so it's definitely a heart car isn't it than a head car yes you buy it because you want it thank you very much very off-road old volvo lady there are there are two things that have annoyed me yes um number one is that driving it the other day uh, no passenger in the passenger seat um it was doing the um seat belt bonging Ooh. for the whole drive home which did you have your handbag on the seat nope didn't even have Full a handbag on the seat okay. nope yeah, oh yes, there was several <laughs> cases of wine on the passenger seat, but I didn't think that would I mean, count. I think everyone um, knows you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, nothing on the passenger seat. So that was obviously frustrating, um, which was an issue I've had in a Skoda before as well. So VW group yes. thing. Um, and secondly is if I were to buy it, which genuinely part of me is like, I would be very happy to own this car. Um, and probably lose my membership to the uh, motoring journalist yes. clubs. Um, it's it's a lot of money, Tim. It is forty two thousand pounds. Yeah, this one. and and forty two thousand and twenty five. And twenty five pounds. 
<laughs> but you know, everyone finances everything. This is probably like four hundred and something quid a month, I guess. Which yeah, is yeah, it's just what things. else you could. Yeah, it's about four hundred well, pounds a month else. for the lease. There's nothing else, and it is interesting. I think yeah. I probably already said this that. This is pretty much the most popular version of the T-Rock in Germany. Mm. Um, they sell thousands of these cabs. And if the Germans think it's interesting, then it's probably interesting. Oh yeah, I might not have said the roof can go up and down at speeds up to 18 or 19 miles an hour, and it takes nine seconds to do it. But there you go. Anyway, that's enough from us about driving it and owning it. Back to you, Tim, for an outro. So in conclusion, what exactly do I think about the T-Rock Cabriolet? Not that it matters much, but I quite like it. It kind of shows that Volkswagen can still do fun. And it's nice that people are actually buying this, albeit in Germany, because it's got a feel good factor that few other Volkswagens certainly have. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And that kind of shows in the driving. It's not sporty by any stretch of the imagination, but I think the people that are gonna be buying this will be cruising. Not that sort, but you know, down to the south of France, something like that. But even if you just put the roof down on your commute, it's quite a joyous place to be. It's got all the tech you want, the wireless Apple CarPlay, all that kind of stuff makes life easy. The engine is fine. You get about 40 MPG out of this 1.5, which isn't brilliant, but it's not the worst. Don't expect sporty handling and the price is the big sticking point. At 40 grand after options, it is a chunky, chunky thing. It's kind of the same price as the T-Roc R, which is obviously a lot faster, but is only a hard top. So Volkswagen isn't scared of pushing the prices up there, but this is <laughs> definitely up there. But you know, if you want convertible SUV, you haven't got much choice and this will either appeal to you or not appeal to you. Um, but if you're in the former camp, go and give one a try because it's actually pretty good. Just don't listen to all those dusty old motoring journalists with spiders in their pubic hair because it's actually quite fun. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you've liked this, please hit like. That helps me massively. Please drop a comment down below calling me a bald, windy twat and subscribe. And I'll see you next time when I won't be outside with Rachel Hogg standing on her phone board. Goodbye.